This video looks at the velocity four vector of special relativity and how it is related to its coordinates and frames of reference. It also deals with how the Lorentz transformation relates such coordinates for frames of reference that are in relative motion with respect to each other. So let's begin with an increment of length in four-dimensional Minkowski space. So here's a little vector increment here, and it's the expansion of these four elements here because Minkowski dimensional uh, space is four dimensional and so you have mu is zero, one, two and three, there's four there, uh, zero is a time component. These are the basis vectors and we'll have four terms in that expansion. The magnitude of this uh, vector, the length that is, the magnitude of it is ds squared is the vector element dotted with itself, the scalar product, we carry out the scalar product here take out the two uh, basis vectors, put them together, scalar product both basis vectors times the increments of length gives us eta mu nu, dx mu dx nu. Eta mu nu is the Minkowski metric or Minkowski tensor, the subject here. It can be used to lower components on vector elements, vector components or other objects. Let's have a look at a frame of reference S. The green observer in here sees a spaceship passing by. The green observer is at rest with respect to his or her own reference frame. He or she sees the spaceship passing by at speed v um, uh, in a frame S prime. A spaceship forms its own reference frame. Reference frame, so x prime, y prime, z prime, and t prime. Uh, the bottom left hand corner of the spaceship will take as the origin of the S prime frame and the blue observer inside the spaceship is at rest with respect to the spaceship and so the, observe, the green observer sees the flashing light on the spaceship and ascribes to it the coordinates CT, X, Y and Z and these values can change as the spaceship moves through space so these, values can these coordinates can take on a range of values the blue observer sees that the light, flashing light is not moving with respect to him or her. So the x, y and z coordinates here sitting at the origin are zero. However, the light flashes in time. So it's moving in time. So the blue observer ascribes coordinates c, t dash. Now t dash is time measured by the blue observer who is at rest with respect to the flashing light. And so that's the proper time recorded by that observer. Both observers agree that ds squared equals ds prime squared and so the space-time interval represented by ds squared is this one, the space-time interval represented by ds prime is this one and any two observers in relative motion will always agree that this is the case for the two reference frames. That is always true in the case of special relativity for any two observers moving relative to each other, they will always agree that this is the case. Now for the green observer, he or she records this for their space-time interval. But the observer on the spaceship, as we saw earlier, dx prime, dy prime, dz prime are zero. So he or she records this. And this gives us the useful result that ds squared is minus c squared d tau squared. Now the world line or path travelled by a particle uh, in some space-time can be parameterized in terms of the proper time tau of the particle as it measured by a clock that it carries with itself. So the proper time is measured by uh, of a particle is that time the particle would measure by carrying a clock with itself. So it has a clock on its person if you like and it records proper time. So x mu can be written as x mu of tau is ct of tau, x of tau, y of tau, z of tau. And the particle's path is parameterized in terms of the proper time. The four velocity of a particle is the tangent vector u to its own world line. Now the magnitude of this tangent vector is constant because we're talking about objects that move with constant velocity, constant speed. We're not dealing with acceleration here. So the magnitude, the speed that is, is constant. Now the four velocity vector is given by u is u superscript or contravariant index mu times the basis vector in covariant form. 
is this here, dx mu d tau times the basis vector. Alright, from earlier, ds squared was eta mu nu, dx mu dx nu is minus c squared d tau, divide through by d tau squared, we get minus c squared, and so eta mu nu times this object times this object, this derivative with respect to proper time, and this one with respect to proper time, the derivative, is eta mu nu is the components of the tangent vector. U contravariant mu, u contravariant mu. So these are the tangent vectors, the components of the tangent vectors as we saw earlier. This object here gives us minus c squared. So the magnitude of the velocity vector squared is the scalar product of the velocity vector with itself. Is this object here and Contracting on the indices and the index mu gives us u subscript mu, u superscript mu is minus c squared. So the magnitude squared of velocity vector is minus c squared for the Minkowski metric given earlier. Alright, the relationship between coordinate and proper time is the coordinate time t is gamma times proper time. That implies that the differentials, dt equals gamma d tau, and gives us, rearrange these, uh, and we get the differential operators d d tau is gamma times d d t. Alright, now, for an observer in some frame s watching an object passing by, he she will record the following components for its velocity. So u mu is dx mu d tau is gamma mu. This is what the observer sees. Gamma subscript mu. That's the speed with which the object's passing by. dx mu d tau is, gives us these four components for the velocity vector. Now for some other observer in some other frame S prime, watching the same object, he shall record the following components for its velocity. The same as previously, just with a prime on it. And the gamma subscript mu, uh, u, sorry, prime. So u prime will be the velocity that this observer in s prime sees the object moving by. So there's the four components that the second observer sees. A picture of this, so here's our first observer in frame s, sees this object here going by with speed u. The blue observer here sees it going by with speed u prime. And this observer blue may be standing right next to this one, maybe somewhere off a different spatial location, different time, but just his or her coordinate system will be different to this one. So they're two different frames of reference, each frame of reference, and they may not be moving relative to each other, they may be, but they, they ascribe to it different coordinates because they have different frames of reference. Alright, now if the two frames S and S prime are moving relative to each other in standard configuration with speed V, and their components are related to each other through the Lorentz transformation. And so we see the components of the observer in S, the components of the observer in S prime. Here's the Lorentz transformation for the relative motion of the two frames of reference with speed V, and subscript V there. Now, perform this um, uh, matrix multiplication here, and as we showed in the previous video, when the algebra and so on is done, we end up with this relationship here, which relates the observer in S prime, what he or she sees, the observer in S, what he or she sees, the relative speed V between the two frames of reference, and these are how the two components are related.